everyone, Rarity Dash here, and it's time for another reaction video. And today we're looking at three songs featuring Kiryu Koko of Hololive, who sadly by the time this video goes up will have graduated from the company. Uh, I'm recording this before the graduation, actually just a couple hours before the graduation, immediately after I recorded the unboxing of this. If you saw that, that would have gone up yesterday. Uh, <laughs> which I love this thing. <laughs> Gonna have it with me as I watch this video. Um... But uh, yeah, I'm recording this before the graduation event uh, because I haven't heard any of these songs yet. And I imagine since the event is going to be, uh, I, I think, partly if not entirely a concert, um, I imagine these songs are going to feature heavily. So I want to go into it having heard them before, uh, which isn't always the case with Hollow Live events. I mean, I went into into Bloom having heard like none of those songs, but... Uh, I don't know, I want to I want to actually see the videos for Coco and uh, actually experience these songs before the graduation. Uh, and I figured why not go ahead and record it and uh, give you guys my reactions because it is kind of a special thing. And um, really, I guess it's going to be my only chance to react to Kiryu Coco music. So I think I got to take it. And uh, we do have three songs. I kind of let them pile up, I guess. But we have a cover called Fanta, her original Weather Hackers. And I'm also including uh, a song which she only features on, but with her generation, called uh, Kisaki Not, uh, featuring the fourth generation of Hollow Live. Uh, and I'm going to be watching all three of those, the official videos. Um, and I think I'll do them in that order. I wasn't really sure what order to do them in, uh, but I think it makes sense to start with the cover because, I don't know, I feel like the original is going to be more personal to Coco, uh, so I figured get the cover out of the way first. And then I kind of like the ending on the note of the group song uh, because, I mean, I don't know, it just feels right to me, especially since, I mean, Luna, Toa, Watame, and Kanata they're still going to be around, and uh, going into the future, I just feel like it's the right note to uh, kind of have that there. To both celebrate Coco and what she's given us, and, uh, and you know, acknowledge the ones that we still have around. And, um, yeah, that's how I'm going to play it. Um, not really sure what to expect from these songs. I, uh, I, I am very familiar with Coco as a performer. Uh, she is famously not the best singer in Hollow Life, uh, which, I mean, she would freely admit, she's, she'd be the first person to admit that, uh, but what she is is a really, really good performer. I mean, her singing streams, even though she's not a particularly great singer, though I mean, she, she has her moments. There are moments in those singing streams where she actually does sound good, and certain, there are certain songs that are just right in, in her range where she actually does sound legitimately good on them. Um, but, uh, yeah, she's an excellent performer. She commands just this incredible energy. I mean, even in just the regular karaoke st singing streams, where it's just her and the live 2D, uh, she can just really put on a show there. Um, and even more so when it's actual 3D. Like, I mean, uh, yeah, I still remember my first Hall Live actual show that I watched, uh, Second Fest, and, uh, yeah, Coco's Echo and, uh, the fourth gen's, um, Roki were just really big standouts for me, and a lot of it just had to do with Coco's stage presence and, uh, her ability to, um, to really put on a good show, and I, I really think she's an excellent entertainer, and, uh, I'm curious to see how that translates to, like, recorded songs, like ones where she's not singing it live. Um, like, I imagine, especially for the original, that it's going to be something that was written to her, so it's probably going to be well within her range, and she'll probably sound good on it. I don't know about the cover. I'm guessing she, again, chose something that suits her. Um... But yeah, I'm not really I'm not really sure what a Coco Kiryu song is going to sound like. Uh, as for the group song, I'm sure that'll sound fantastic because I mean, uh, those girls 
Well, I mean, fourth gen is kind of interesting. I mean, Luna is kind of a weird singer. Uh, <laughs> Luna's just weird in general. She's like one of the most, uh, like, she feels the most like a character to me. I don't know. <laughs> But uh, Toa was definitely an amazing singer, and so was Watame and uh, and Kana. Yeah, I mean the other three. Yeah, wow. Uh, <laughs> and Luna's cute. I mean, like uh, the Hajimite no Chu, her rendition of that. That's that's pretty freaking adorable. Um, so she can she can use it well. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure what they're gonna do for that uh, that group song, but I'm sure it'll be excellent. I'm sure all of this is going to be good, and I'm excited to just get into it. So yeah, me and Coco, we're ready, and uh, we're going to go ahead and bring up a screen capture. Don't need that. And I'll go full screen on this. Now let's start with Fansa. Not familiar with this song. I, I don't really, I mean, I guess I could check. Well, does it say who the original? I mean, it's all in Japanese. Honeyworks. I've heard of them before. Okay. So this is a Honeyworks song. And uh, here we go. Three, two, one, Fanza. Here you go. Aww. Aww, that's adorable art. Yes. <laughs> the sombreros. The Spanish strings were pretty great. Aww. I really love her in her idol outfit. Like it feels like a weird gap thing, but I mean she actually looks really good in it. This is a cute song too. Oh wow. Yeah really loving the art. That's 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 hot. <laughs> Aw cute chibi coco. Casual coco just oh wow, yeah. And she does sound pretty good on the song, too, I gotta say. She's, she's handling it. And she does have a very unique voice. But, making it- aw, the dragon. <laughs> Don't go sad. Alright. Best dragon waifu. Indeed. Let's go. <laughs> right when I try to sing along, they change it up. Zuto. Oh, 
the reddit guys in the <laughs> I don't even care you Chen <laughs> oh that was great oh, no no freaking stupid ads okay none of that and let's move on to the next one that was amazing that was really just a beautiful video very very nice uh, just really cute artwork very cute song. Coco handled it well, and it was just a nice, uh, nice treat for, uh, yeah, for the fans. And, uh, yeah, really, really good stuff. So I'm curious to hear the next one. Let's get into it. Weather Hackers, this is her original, and, uh, I'm very excited. Now, this one, you might be surprised that I haven't heard it, because I think she, like, she uh, previewed this, I believe, in a Minecraft stream at some point. Uh, I never quite got around to watching that stream. Uh, and then I think she might have even performed it at her birthday stream. But uh, the birthday was like only a week after the announcement. And I, I, I wasn't really... I, I, I didn't quite... <laughs> I couldn't quite bring myself to watch that stream at, uh, at the time. I think I might watch it now. Because I've definitely reached the accept acceptance phase of things, uh, <laughs> so to speak. But, um, yeah, I, I, as a result, haven't heard Weather Hackers yet, even though I know it's been around for a while. Um, so, yeah, not really sure what to expect. The title's interesting. I don't really know how Weather Hackers play. I mean, I guess a, a dragon <laughs> could definitely impact the weather but uh, it's an interesting title not really sure what it's going to mean uh, or what to really expect here so let's just go ahead and get into it alright weather hackers hmm. alright Oh, well, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a mark. <laughs> Interesting how things are crossed out. I wonder what that's all about. Just had to work that in there. <laughs> okay, Weather Hackers. I, I, I think I understand the title now. Uh, we're not really hacking the weather, are we? Just a bit of a euphemism. <laughs> euphemism. <laughs> Is that what all the other... Lyrical changes that we're having are too? Wish I understood more Japanese. The level, it's, it really is kind of a very idle song in terms of the sound. Like, it's the kind of thing you could hear one of the actual say so ones sing. Mm -hmm. 
And then you reach this part. <laughs> Leather hackers. an idle vibe for a bit, making it rock out a bit more. Oh, wow. This is amazing. <laughs> I hope some of the other girls cover this. <laughs> Weather hackers. That's wow. Very good. <laughs> very creative. Very interesting. Um, I should have said uh, CLP. That sounds kind of familiar was uh, responsible for most of it, though I'm sure Coco had some input uh, in terms of writing it. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just a very on-point tribute from the lyricist. Though, I mean, it's an original song, so of course she had something to do with uh, the idea. <laughs> That's great, though. I, I, I didn't see that coming at all somehow. Like, I expected that there might be some of that kind of stuff in there. Like, she'd give it some of that Coco personality. But uh, I, I, the thing with the title just did not occur to me. <laughs> That's hilarious. And we're ending off with uh, the fourth gen song, Kisuki Na, which is another original. And uh, it's on Kanada's channel, and I'm excited to give it a look. And, um, yeah, this will be the only... Uh, I mean, I don't know if they've had... I don't think they have had all other group songs. I mean, maybe they have. Though, I feel like I might have known about it if they would have. Like, if they did covers. Like, just the five of them. But maybe they have. Let me know if they did. Um, but with Coco just not really being the type to have songs, I just feel like they probably didn't really have any before this. But whatever the case, this is uh, the only original that we'll get with uh, the entire fourth gen of All Alive, sadly. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm hoping it's a good one. I'm hoping that uh, this is another uh, another great send-off for Coco with her and all of her friends. And... Uh, or with her closest friends, her gen mates. Um, yeah, anyway, let's go ahead, get started. Here we go. All right, there they are. <laughs> they sound really good together. I'm glad we got English lyrics on this one. Kind of surprised we didn't have that with the Coco ones. 
Aw, Coco, you look cuter than that. I mean, the others look cute too, but it's kind of about Coco right now. <laughs> oh, kind of tough. Kanata's got a lot of range. I mean, Toa's pretty much all deep on the other hand, but she sounds amazing. <laughs> Watame also has a lot of range. Luna's just Luna. I love how we have Coco in the center. You gotta celebrate her while she's there. Really cute art style, by the way. I mean, Luna looks adorable. I love Toa's voice. Aww. Try a little just for today. Oh god. <laughs> the lyrics are hidden art. True. <laughs> oh, we'll give it Coco a bit of a solo. For the bridge. Oh wow, or maybe this is the bridge. <laughs> that sounds really cool. It was like a pre bridge. I love the, the drums there, the, like, marching drums. Yeah, that was really nice. I like the song. Again, very idle, I would say. But, I mean, it, at the end of the day, they are an idol group. <laughs> so, I guess that's what you gotta expect. <laughs> Thanking the Tatsunoko. Oh, that was beautiful. I really like that. We will meet again. People pass Damn people. ads. Why are end roll ads even good for? Don't do it. <sighs> Alright. But uh, yeah, there we go. That was uh that was wonderful. Um, yeah, the lyrics, I, really, the, I think they feel, fit the, they fit the, the situation very well, and, uh, Kanda, Kanda wrote them all, that makes it even better, she, she's really good. I mean, I don't really, but like, I mean, they had translations. So I guess I do understand them, <laughs> and they were beautiful. 
And the music too, though, that's interesting. Like, like she composed it or what? Or... I don't even know what that really means. Music versus arrangement, how you break it down. Uh, like, huh. But um, that's cool. I didn't know Kanata was a songwriter. That's, uh, truth be told, there is a ton of Hollow Life music I haven't heard. I mean, I, <laughs> I like to pretend I'm this huge fan, but there's just so much on the JP side that I haven't heard yet, and I don't really... I mean, I've seen them all perform live, like at the Second Fest and at Bloom and from First and all that, but um, yeah, there's just so much I haven't seen from all of them that I don't really have the full picture of all of them as uh, artists. And, uh, yeah, that's really cool. I mean, I really appreciate songwriters, and uh, I, uh, I'm i glad to see that. And, yeah, it was a really good song. I mean, in a lot of ways, it might be my favorite of the three, uh, which feels kind of... I mean, this is supposed to be all about Coco, so kind of weird to pick the one that has the least of her in it that's her with others, but at the same time... I don't know, I don't think she would mind if it was the one with her that she made with all her friends. And, uh... It was just such a beautiful song. And it, it, it definitely had that idol song feel. Uh... But it was unique enough, it was memorable enough, the melody was nice. Uh, I think I'm just more used to what we're getting on the EN side, which is definitely a bit further from the whole... Idol, uh, <laughs> the whole idol, uh, just the theme in terms of the songs we're getting. I mean, uh, Callie, not really your conventional idol, and uh, Gura, her original song, uh, that was something else. That was amazing. I love that song, Reflect. If you haven't heard that, go, go listen to it. It's really just incredible. Uh, like, I wish I had reacted to that. I, I, I I needed Coco to get me out of my stupor and uh, get me recording again. But if I was recording when that came out, I uh, I think it would have been a good reaction. Uh, <laughs> and I did think about it. I really did think about it pretty hard because it was Co it was Gura's first ever song. Uh, so I actually waited like a whole day on that one. Am I gonna am I gonna save this? Uh, I kind of puzzled that out in my head. Uh, but then I opted not to. And then once I heard it, I immediately regretted it because it was so good. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's a big tangent. Uh, <laughs> point is Halloween. I, mean, I guess, the, uh, well, even Kiara, who is like the idol fangirl of, of the Ian side. She's the one who's really into the idol music. Uh, like, Hinotori is not really a traditional idol song. It's uh, definitely this... Uh, rock song. Uh, I mean, I mean, Heart Challenger is, so there's that. But, uh, like, Hinotori is more of her iconic one. Um, so, yeah, the Ian side, we're definitely getting a kind of different vibe over there. But, uh, I mean, I do appreciate this idol stuff, and Kanata really wrote a really good idol song in her and her friends performed it amazingly. Uh, I think it really suited all five of them well. All of them uh, really uh, had memorable bits to it. Co Coco definitely, Toa definitely, Luna definitely. I feel like maybe Kanata and Watame were just sort of uh, filling the gaps a little bit maybe. Interestingly enough, since it's Kanata's song. But, I mean, that might just be because they're, uh, they are the ones with the, like, more diverse range, so they kind of can do that a bit better and just sort of, I don't know, keep it going and, uh, keep it cohesive in sound. Um, which, uh, yeah, it, uh, definitely, definitely a great group song. And, uh, 
very beautiful. All three of these were amazing, though. I mean, Weather Hackers was hilarious. That chorus really caught me off guard. And it shouldn't have. It really shouldn't have, this being Coco. But it was incredible and uh, just a really fun song. And uh, the first song, Fans, that was... Uh, that one just really felt like it was uh, full of love and uh, really a beautiful song. Um, in some ways, the most poignant, though I think at the end of the day, definitely the, no, the group song was the most poignant, but that one, that one was, that was really sweet. And that, I mean, that video, I think when it was first put up, it was like a gift to the Tatsunoko, which is Coco's fan base. Um, that was like the original title of it before it became the song title. Um, and it, it definitely comes across. It definitely felt like a gift. It was, uh, really a beautiful song and a beautiful video. But all these were great, and, uh, yeah, I, uh, I mean, at time of speaking, Coco's gonna graduate in, like, uh, uh, two hour, two and a half hours, I think. It's, uh, 3.30 a.m. right now. <laughs> And uh, the Coco stream is going to be at 6 a.m. And I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there for it live. Um, so, yay for very little sleep. Um, but, yeah, I couldn't imagine missing it. So, going to be there. And hopefully I'll see these performed live. And, uh, yeah. Not really much else to say. Um... I'm glad to be re recording your reaction video again. It's been a while. Uh, I mean, I guess not that long. The last thing I recorded was a reaction video, the Cali EP re reaction. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, part of me wishes it was under different circumstances, uh, the whole thing with Coco leaving. But, I mean, it is what it is, and I'm glad to have these songs uh, to listen to and enjoy uh, and just sort of celebrate the time that she gave us of hers. And uh, yeah, Coco, I really appreciate you. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you did and see you in the next one.